to find those Nazarenes who were preserved by the Father. So it's big brother Nazarene looking for little brother Nazarene to bring and reunite and restore the family of Israel. So not only are we the faithful remnant who keep Torah and, and believe in Yeshua's resurrection, not only are we the Nazarenes, our brother is preserved by the Father like he preserved us. So we have that common bond that both our older brother Yeshua and we have both been preserved by the Father to be found and restored and recovered at and rescued in these last days. Let me lose today. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Watch this. I will preserve you. Why? If I preserve the remnant, the Nazarim of Israel, you are Yeshua. Ha Nazari, Ha Nazari. You are the Nazarene. How can we be preserved and he's not being preserved? But listen, in order for Yeshua to be preserved, he can't be the greater Yahweh. Because the greater Yahweh needs no one to preserve him. That's right. Come on. Amen. If Yeshua needs the Father to preserve him and to help him, uh, excuse me, he's Yahweh, but he's the lesser Yahweh. Well, brother, I don't understand this greater lesser Yahweh. I know, because, because that's the key to understanding the scriptures. Come on, man. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. In the day of Yeshua, I've helped you. I will preserve you. How will I, and I will preserve you, and here's how I'm going to rescue Israel. Watch. I will give you as a covenant for the people. What people? The people of Israel. To restore the land, that's the land of Israel, to cause you to inherit the desolate heritages. Listen. So now Yahweh tells us this form servant, this formed Evet, the means by which he will regather the Nazarenes of Israel, by, by which he will raise up the tribes of Jacob, the, the means by which he will be a light to the heathen. Here's how. Covenant. Covenant. Behold, I make with you a renewed covenant. Go to Jeremiah 31, 31. Keep your finger there. Jeremiah 31, 31. Covenant. 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 Give me out 31, 31. See the days are coming, saith Yahweh, says Yahweh, that I will make a Brit Hadashah, a renewed covenant with Beit Israel and with Beit Yehuda. And then you go back to the end of verse 34. In this new covenant, I will forgive their iniquity. End of verse 34. And I will remember their sin no more. So how does Yahweh bring us back? He forgives our iniquity and remembers our sin no more. Through the covenant of his Yeshua. How is Yeshua going to restore Israel, regather Jacob, bring Jacob back? Through covenant. What well, it says in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, 31, that the New Testament, how many, how many, before they came to the truth of Nazarene Israel, believed the new, in the New Testament? I did. Well, according to this, it says that Yahweh will make a New Testament with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I don't see the word Gentiles there, do you? No. I don't see the word Christians there, do you? No. I don't see the word Baptist there. No. He says when the New Testament is made, it will be made with the house of Yehuda. And with the house of Israel. Doesn't say Christians and Gentiles. So how do they get in? Now you got it. They join the tribes. The tribes don't join them. Everyone is welcome in Yahweh's house. Israelites and non-Israelites. Israelites and heathen. Everyone is welcome in Yahweh's kingdom. But it is up for them to join us. So that the new covenant was cut with both houses. Yes. There's no new covenant with Christians. So those who call themselves Christians must be from one of the two houses. Because there was no New Testament cut with anybody else other than the two houses. So those who call themselves Christians must be Israelites and need the revelation of the understanding to walk in the truth. Right? Yes. That's what they need. Yes. 
Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I will give you Yeshua as a covenant for the people of Israel, both houses, to restore the land, cause you to inherit the desolate heritages. Boy, that'll preach. Look at verse 18. I mean, footnote 18, I'm sorry. How many see footnote number 18? I see it. Two. Those calling on Mashiach will be the preserved of Israel, designated as a Brit Am or a covenant people, to restore the land and cause other redeemed remnant covenant people to inherit all the pagan and ruined inheritances and culture, even those many of us once belonged to. So Yeshua is coming to desolate your past heritage. Are you willing to let him do that? Come on. I'll say that again. Yeshua was coming to restore and rebuild and regather Israel. But the only way he can do that is if you allow him to destroy your desolate past spiritual heritage. Yes, he'll bring us back to the land. But part of coming, becoming Israel and returning to the land is, will you allow him to destroy the desolate heritage that means nothing? Nothing. Make sense? Nothing. So he will do it by covenant, by taking the two houses, restoring them, regathering them, regathering the preserved remnant of Nazarenes of Israel if we allow him to rebuild the desolate heritage. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can't be any simpler. Yes, yes, yes. Now look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. That you may say to the prisoners, well, I don't know, Rabbi, I, I believe in Yeshua, but he said, if you, weren't, if you weren't in the correct heritage of Israel, you were a prisoner. How many felt like prisoners in those other systems. It just didn't fit, did it? It just did. There was something about the Trinity and the three gods and the Sunday worship. My goodness, it just, it just didn't fit. We didn't know the doctrine, we didn't know all the reasons, but it just didn't click. So we were prisoners. We were prisoners to our heritage that was passed on to us. That was a heritage of exile. It was not a correct heritage. I was Jewish and I had a heritage of exile. How many know you can be Jewish and still have a heritage of exile? If Yeshua is not the centerpiece of your theology, you are still in theological exile. I don't care how many times you convert to Judaism and how many Yeshiva classes you take. If Yeshua, not Mashiach, forget about Mashiach. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry is a Mashiach. Dr. Seuss was a Mashiach. <laughs> Golden Meir was a Mashiach. And that's what Judaism says then, doesn't it? There's no such thing as the Mashiach. Every generation has a Mashiach. Every Israelite has the possibility of becoming Mashiach. So when you talk to the anti-missionaries, they go, ha, 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 ha. David was a Mashiach in his generation. Shlomo was a Mashiach in his generation. There's no such thing as one chosen covenant Mashiach to gather the tribes of Yaakov, restore the preserved ones of Israel. There's no one Mashiach. There are hundreds. That's why, uh, that's why they all say, that's why a lot of people say, Yahi to the Rebbe. <laughs> that's right. The Rebbe was a Mashiach to his generation, to his followers. Yeah. That you, but I have raised you up to say to the prisoners of Israel, Brit Am, the covenant people, that they may be released from prison, that they make to them that are in darkness, show yourselves. Now look at verse, note 21. Show yourselves. Look at note 21. Isn't that what I've been telling you for how many years now, some of you? Five years? Six years? Seven years? Show yourself! Don't study your Jewish roots. Show yourself. Live this thing. Don't answer the phone on Shabbat. Don't go to work on Shabbat. Call in sick 
all the Moadim, not some. I'm sick and I plan on being even sicker, honey. I ain't coming in. <laughs> Show yourself. Yeshua came to take you, the prisoners of Israel who were living in the prison of the desolate heritages of their forefathers and says, now I've done it for you. Now I've been faithful to the Father. Now you be faithful to me and now you show yourself. Show yourself. You're a friend? Stand up and don't be ashamed of it. Show yourself. Show yourself. Show yourself a former prisoner. Show yourself a former desolate heritage person. Because I've come to make you a covenant nation again. Amen. Yahweh yeah, talking to his son Yeshua. They, yeah, he says, I'll be with you so that you can talk to the prisoners. And you can go to them who are in darkness and give them the rest, message of restoration. And Danny, what is the message of restoration? Show yourself. Show yourself. Prove it. You're in Israel? Prove it. That doesn't mean drop your pants. No. Show yourself. Show me your circumcision. That's right. It means drop your religious veneer. That's right. Drop your excuses. Yeah, service is too long. Too long. My my back hurts. Your back. I can't even walk. What's your excuse? I have an arthritic hip. Would you like my hip? <laughs> Would anybody like to borrow my hip for a season? I'm a candidate for hip replacement. Woo, that sounds exciting. Doug said, I have good news for you. You're a candidate. Oh, really? I'm a candidate, huh? Yes, you're okay. That's good news, Mr. Kanachazi, because a lot of people are not candidates. Yeah. You're a candidate. Yeah. How come I feel like crud? Yeah. How come I'm not happy that I'm a candidate? You know, it's supposed to make me feel good. You've been nominated. I've been nominated for hip replacement. <laughs> you should. I'm with you that you may say to the prisoners, go out. Go out, go out, go out, come out of her, Revelation 18.4, come out of her, my people. Isn't that the message of restoration? Leave your desolate heritage. How do I do it? Come out. My pastor's going to call me. That's right. So what? Yeah, but he's going to check up on me. How many came from that mentality? If I leave, if I don't show up in two weeks, he's going to call me. I, I, I used to do the same thing, as many of you know. When someone didn't show up for two weeks, I, I would go to... Uh, Sunday morning to the Entenmann store, buy cookies, and drop it in their door with a, with a card. Very nice. Some of you think, wish I still did that. The problem was they didn't show up. When I called, they didn't answer my call. And here I spent two ninety nine for a box of Entenmann's cookies. And every time we had a visitor to have, well, brother, have you filled out a visitor's card? Well, I filled out a visitor's card, and then I brought them a box of cookies. Every visitor got a box of cookies. You know how many of those people stayed in the shul? Zero. This rabbi is desperate. If he's waking up Sunday morning dropping off cookies, he's desperate. That's right. Hashem Yahweh. So that's the message of restoration. I'm sure when you get there with this covenant, here's what you teach them. Here's how you raise them up. Here's how you restore the dream of Israel. You teach them how to go out of their systems. Leave their desolate heritages. You will inherit their desolate heritages. You'll take it away from them, and you'll inherit it. So you can give them your tov heritage. Hello. You take their desolate heritage, and you can give them your tov heritage. Come on, And when you take their sin and their desolate heritage and restore them to Israel, you'll be able to show them more in darkness. You'll be able to declare them, show yourself. They will feed on the waves, and their pastures shall be in all the bare hills. They shall not hunger or thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that has rachamim on them shall also lead them. Even by the springs of Mayim, he will guide them. He'll guide Israel when Israel returns, you sure? He will guide them. I'll make all my mountains a path, my highways will be exalted. Things will change. See, these will come from far. Let's go to footnote four. And for I am Israel coming from the farthest points, 
from Jerusalem on the earth. And you shall come from far. How far do you have to come to return to Israel? Very far. Very ro many roads, many paths, many turns, many twists. These will come from far, all the ends of the earth. The, and see these from the north, from the west, from the land of Sinim, jump down to footnote 5, the land of Sinim. According to Rashi, and the Aramaic translation of verse 12, Sinim is the land of the south. The land furthest away and furthest south from Israel is Australia. In the Latin Vulgate, translation of the Bible by Jerome, the word in verse 12 for Sinim is Australi, or in English, Australia. Rashi attributes the lost tribe of Simeon to Australia. The great Southland. The name Sinim contains the root word for Sinai, Sinai. Both the mountain and the entire Sinai Peninsula. And so we see. So in certain translations, Sinim is, is called Australia. Okay? So where are some of these Israelites going to return from? From Australia, from New Zealand, from points that are south. Sing, O Shemayim, be full of Simchaor. Break forth into singing, O mountains, for Yahweh has comforted his people. How? By restoring them back to himself. Amen? Yahweh has comforted his people and will have Rachamim upon his afflicted. In the restoration and regathering of all Israel, both the heavens and the earth will join together as a chad did in great gladness. I don't think you got that. I did. I know Daniel did. Come on. He always says, when I do this thing of restoration and regathering of the tribes of Yaakov, he says, it won't just be an earthly thing, it will be a cosmic event so that both the heavens and the earth will join together and sing. Sing, O Shemayim, be full of simcha, O earth. The joy of Yahweh is your strength. What is the, what is the strength of the restoration of the two houses? Our joy, our simcha. That's why the devil attacks this theology so much, because he tries to steal our joy. Our joy of being an Israelite and returning. I can't be, I'm not Jewish. So he wants to steal that joy when the joy of Yahweh is our strength. But the heavens are singing. The earth is singing. Because Yahweh is raising up through his Evet the tribes of Yaakov. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. And Yahweh will comfort his people through Yeshua. And he will have Rachamim, mercy on the afflicted of both houses. But Sion has said, Yahweh has forsaken me. My master has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child? That she should not have Rachamim on the son of her womb? Yes, perhaps. But they may forget, and will I not forget you? See, I have engraven you upon the palm of my hands. How did Yahweh bring back the two houses of Israel? Through what? The nails engraved engraving us on the palm of his hand. Simple, right? Those nails, yes. those, those two nails, one in each hand, were for both houses of Israel. To bring Jewish and non-Jewish Israel back to him. Now he said, I've shown you compassion in this regathering, in this restoration. How do I know? I, how can I see that compassion? Just look at the nails in my hand. I died for your individual salvation, but to make these two hands one, to make these two, one nail for the house of Yehuda, one nail for the house of Ephraim. A mother might forget her human child, her nursing child. That may happen, but I will never forget you. Why? Because you're engraven in the nail prints on the palm of my hand. Your walls, verse, um, verse 16, your walls, the walls of Yerushalayim are continually before me. All the walls that stop you from coming back are continually before me and I'm determined to break them down. I'm, all the walls that you've thrown in my face, why you can't live this thing, why you can't teach this thing, why you can't 
say no to the Christmas invitation and the, and the, and the, uh, and the all those in the Easter body and all all the walls you throw before me they're continually before me but you but I won't forget you I'll chase you down till I get you because you're engraved on the palm Hallelujah. of my hand Amen. 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 all the walls you put in front of me they're continually before me I'll kick them down when I make a covenant with you your children will hurry back to me notice your children will hurry back. When, you finally, when we finally receive the truth, what do we do? We run out of there. We, we show ourselves, Ted. Go back to verse um, 9. We show ourselves as former prisoners of darkness. We give Yeshua our desolate heritage. He gives us our Israelite heritage back. And when we finally get it and we sink in that we're engraven on the palm of his hands, we don't walk back. We run back. For one year, we're in the church and in the synagogue. For one year. Some of us for two years. But at some point, we run out of the fire. That's right. And Yahweh says, I see these walls. They're continually before me. Just like the walls of Jerusalem that are continually before me. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh, I won't forget you. Where the troll tribes are lost, and you're focusing in on minor issues. You ever hear that one? Solamente la sangre de Yeshua, solamente la sangre. You, 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 focus, you focus. Oh, two houses, the casa de Israel, the casa de Ephraim, You ever hear that one? We're majoring on the minors. You ever hear that one? It's all about the blood. Only the blood, right? That's how. Huh? Just give me cheese. No way. No, one second. One second. <laughs> Your walls are continually before me. Your children will hurry back to me. He says, no, 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 no. It's a major thing because they are. It is continually an issue with me. You're not listening. Yahweh says this issue about the preservation of the preserved ones or the Nazarene is continually in my consciousness. I am absorbed with the mission. I am absorbed with the task. So when the, when the, when the religious folks tell you don't get caught up in the two house doctrine, Yahweh says, what do you mean don't get caught up? This issue is continually before me. What issue? The, the walls that we put up because we don't want to surrender our desolate heritage and we don't want to come out of the darkness of being prisoners. Come on. Come on. Well, brother, two houses. I, I believe in the two houses, but it's not the main thing. The main thing is the blood of Yeshua. True. Correct. Now, how many times are we supposed to uh, get saved? Once a day, once a week, once a year, or once every Feliz Navidad, or once every equinox. Tell me, how often can you get saved? And once you're washed, he died, he said, it is finished. That means you get saved once. It is finished. If your pastor says, come back because it isn't finished, keep sitting down. <laughs> come back up, brother, it's not finished. You should have said it is finished. <clears throat> and by the way, you know what the Restoration Scriptures does for all of those of you who are sitting at home that have not yet bought your copy? The last word of the book of the Torah is what word? What's the last word of the Torah then? Israel. But by restoring Psalm 151 to the book of Tehillim, the book of Tehillim also ends with Israel. Psalm 151 ends with Israel. So both the Torah and the Psalms end with the word Israel, which we've done in the Restoration Scriptures. Go ahead and be, be, stay quiet on me. That's okay. I'll sell it to somebody. I'll sell it to somebody else. Your walls, meaning all your conditions for not showing yourself as former prisoners of desolate heritage and not coming back and get going with the program. This is continually. Hello? Hello? This is a continual issue with Abba Yahweh. Why are you still messing with the other religious systems when I've shown you the truth? Why? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. 
Your walls are continually before me. Your children will run and hurry back to me. If you show yourself, guys, your children will benefit from your lifestyle. They won't have to come out. They'll already come out with you, and they'll hurry back. Your destroyers, if they that made you a ruin, will depart from you. Here's an interesting play on words. Hello? What's the Hebrew word for destroyer? Destroyer. There are different words for this destroyer in Hebrew, but one of them is Jehovah. Talk to, Talk to me now. Yahweh. I like Jehovah. Yeah? You like Jehovah? In Hebrew, Jehovah means the destroying one. Pardon me. The Heavenly Father is not a destroying one. The Heavenly Father doesn't destroy. He's a redeemer. He's a lover. He's a restorer. Jehovah is one of those heritages that has to go. And you know something else? There's no J in Hebrew. It cannot be Jehovah because there's no J in Hebrew. The 1611 King James Bible did not say Jesus and Jeremiah. It said I-E. Yesu, Jeremiah. Why? Because it was the last letter in the English language was J. So it was the last letter of the English language didn't exist in the original King James 1611 edition, and there's no J in Hebrew. Not even in Greek. There's a Greek. Not even in Greek there's a J. There's an Isu. What is it in Greek? Isu. So how can it be Jehovah when there's no J in Greek or Hebrew? I mean, let's get real here. Get real. See, this is a deliverance ministry. I refuse to pray for the same people every week. Week after week after week, lay hands on them. People want to know why we stopped still praying for people. I know why, and it's not for you to find out why. Because I don't want to be religious. Every time we teach the word, we're having deliverance. When the word is being taught in truth and powerfully under the anointing, it is healing and it is deliverance. It's like, it's like good counseling. It's like good counseling. Okay, good counseling, you think nothing's happening. Okay, when I went for counseling, marital counseling, I said, no, that was a waste of time. When I'm spending $60 a week, I'm wasting my money. Yeah. Right? All it does is make me argue more. Because yeah. Rifka says this, what did you say to him, man? He said, why did, you say, why did you say that to him? So the more I went for counseling, the, more, the worse I was getting. I thought, but then when I stopped, and after a year, a year and a half, whatever it was, with us it was a, it was a terminal case. All right? But when we finally stopped going for counseling, I felt different. I was healed. And she was different. She was healed. So there's something about going through the process that heals. Even though the guy never got out of the chair, anointed me with oil, and pushed me over. <laughs> but after a year and a half of counseling, I woke up one morning and go, whoa, man, you know that? We actually, really, we're not the same. We've changed. Just getting things off your chest sometime will help you change. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Oh, Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Oh, Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Oh, Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And I realized a lot of the things I was doing is because I saw it on television. I had a big bottle of oil. Why did it have to be big? Because I saw it on television. Then I had to speak in tongues right in the middle of my message. And the Lord said to and to Moses, and I, and why, 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 why am I speaking in tongues right in the middle of a verse? Because I saw it on television. <laughs> then I, then I, I, gotta, I gotta walk around when I preach and throw the microphone and throw the handkerchief and then, and then, and then, and then, and then throw the yarmulke at Brian. You know, I gotta, gotta, I gotta go into the audience, stand on chairs. Remember that? Oh, why was I doing that? I saw it on television. In other words, in other words, I was I was mimicking Christianity when Yahweh don't say mimic it, forsake those things. Hey. I used to have services if I didn't walk up on top of a chair that nobody got healed. I had to stand on a chair. Why? I saw it on television. 
I, now I wonder, right in the middle of the verse, then the Lord said to Moses, how do you how do you go from King James to tongues? And then we, you know, when Mitch been there many years ago, we, 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 we got the laughter. Remember that, 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 that Toronto laughter blessing? So we went to see Rodney Howard Brown. Oh, 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 oh. So we opened one verse, Mark chapter 1. Oh, oh. Prefer oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. to Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. So, remember that, remember, remember that laugh from Rodney Howard Brown? Me and Rifka were like, we were laughing, you know why? Because we had nothing else to do. Laughing at everybody else laughing. That's called religious side effects. It changes. Wow, <laughs> real pain in connection. All right, where were we? Okay. Your children will hurry back to me. Your destroyers, they that made you a ruin, shall depart from you. Those who made you a ruin shall depart from you. Lift up your eyes all around, Israel. Look, see. All these who have gathered themselves together have come to you. Now who's talking? The Father. He's saying, lift up your eyes, son. All these have gathered together. They've come to you. As I live, says Yahweh. You will surely clothe yourself with them. Yeshua, our heavenly bridegroom, clothing himself with his bride as an ornament, and you bind them on you as does a bride. For your waste and your desolate places and the land of your destruction shall be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants, and they that are swallowing you up shall be far away. Now listen carefully. I think we're going to get to that verse. Footnote number 13. For your waste and desolate places, who is Israel, and the land of your destruction, meaning the Galut, the exile, will now be too narrow because of all the inhabitants. What inhabitants? Those who used to swallow you up, now they shall be what? Far away. Do you see what's going to happen in the restoration of the two houses of Israel? Hallelujah. Those who swallowed us up and lied to us, they'll be in exile while we return, and there'll be so many of them in exile that there won't even be enough room in the nations. You see what Yahweh does? When we come back to his truth, he takes those who lied to us, who knew the truth or didn't know the truth, but walked in deception, they go into exile as we return. I'll show you this. Let's look at it again. Let's look at it again. For your waste and desolate places and the land of your destruction, meaning the exile, the galut, shall be too narrow because of the inhabitants. And what inhabitants? Those who previously, what? Swallowed you up. Who's going to go out now into the nations? When Israel comes back, those who swallowed us up, they're going to go out to take our place. That's Yahweh. Come on. As we return, they exit. The first will be last and the last will be first. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So those who swallowed us up in error, they will take.